remember, it's a, it would be a little dif difficult to pull out the scales and look at what five sixths of a, of a leather bag would be and figure out how much one of those is. But we move from the analogy to the, the manipulation of symbols. That's what, uh, that's what algebra is all about. And what we want to wind up with is one C, like one bat, right? So if we can just manipulate the numbers so that we can cancel things out and wind up with one times C, then we'll have it. And whatever's on the other side, that's what one C is for. So we just need to make sure that whatever we do, that it is okay to do, that we do it correctly. And uh, after we do that and we've done it correctly, we ask ourselves, did that help me at all? Did that make it so I'm closer? So what do we like to do first? Subtract eight. Well, I mean, add. <laughs> uh, add. Okay. Now, can we subtract eight from both sides? Yes, sure we can. Sure we can. We can do anything to, the same to both sides. But then we would, we would ask ourselves, why would I subtract eight? Because then I get negative sixteen. Right? I would like to cancel out that or that negative eight. So we get fifteen equals five six c. Somehow. Please excuse the interruption. Marcus Klusner, please go to YEP. Marcus Klusner, please go to YEP. Thank you. Really? All right, so what I want to do is make it so that I don't have 5, 6, C, I have 1, C. How do I? Uh, you multiply by 2, 6, 6. Hmm. Yeah. If I multiply 5, 6 by 6 fifths, does that do anything? 30 over 30, 30, 30, which is 1. I like that idea. 15 equals 1. Oh, but I got to do the same thing on both sides. And not just 1, but 1 C. Oh, 5 cancel, you got a 3, we got 18. 6 times 3 is 18. That is all. That's it. Wait, the screen, right? Yes, it was. This one we, we got rid of, like this would be, if you use our analogy, like a bunch of coins hanging over here with, with the bag that we're going to get we got rid of that stuff. But we don't have that here. We don't have like coins on this side, right? We don't have to get rid of that. We don't have to get rid of the units. So what do we do about these two K terms? Combine like terms. Combine like terms. Uh -huh. So 13K minus 5K, 8K equals negative 32. Divide by a k. Eight divided by eight is one. S. Divided by eight, <laughs> negative four. That's what k is. Seven minus three is four. Can we do that? You can't do that. Seven doesn't have an x. Seven is not an x term. They're not like terms. They're not like terms. So, what did they do wrong? They combined things that weren't like terms. Can do that. Wait. All right. So that's what they did. 
wrong. You can't, you can't do that. What would we do instead? Um, subtract 7? Yeah. Negative 3 x equals? That's me. Uh, 5. 5? No. What? 5. 5. 5. Yeah. And then do what? 5 by negative 3. 5 by negative 3. x equals negative 5 thirds. they did next was divide by negative 2 plus sine. Why do you think they did that? Because um, that's really the only thing you could do. Well, Are we doing 22 or 23? 23. Like why, why would they do that? Why would they divide by negative 2? Why would they come up with that idea? They skipped like combining the like terms and then went from like negative 2 times x to the like, negative It's not negative 2 times x, so they're like, let's get rid of that negative 2 like I've done so many times, like with negative 3x or 5x or 4x or whatever x. And just divide by negative 2. Can you divide by negative 2 on both sides? Yeah. Is that something you can do? Absolutely. Whenever I ask, can you do this on both sides? The answer is yes. yes you can always you do the can. same thing on both sides. Right. So if we do the same thing on both sides, then we have to do it correctly. If I'm going to divide this side by negative 2, then I've got to divide this by negative 2, and I've got to divide this by negative 2. That would look like this. Negative 2x divided by negative 2, that's nice. It's just x. But x divided by negative 2 would be minus x over 2. Over 2. Oh. Yes. Couldn't you just put a 1 in front of the x? Yes. Wouldn't that make everything How so? Because you just combine them. Oh, negative. without divided by negative 2. Yeah, without doing that. You just combine ah. them together, so it'd be a. Um, it would just still be yes. one x. Over That's what I'm going to go back in a second and say. That's what we should do. Yeah, because this is just confusing. That well, that's my, that's my point here is that I will tell you whenever you go to solve an equation, can I do this? If you ask me, can I do this? I will say, yeah, you can do that. But you have to ask yourself, should I? Is it a good idea? Does it help me? Does it look very helpful here? No, it looks more confusing. It looks worse. Let me undo all that stuff. Let's just go back to where we had negative 2x plus x. Kind of do what this guy wanted to do, but couldn't because it didn't have like terms. We got like terms here. You get negative 2x plus x is negative x equals 10. How do we get rid of that negative? Add what? Add x? Add 1 to both sides. Add 1 to both sides. Divide by 1. If you add 1, what's negative x plus 1? It's negative x plus 1. It's not Oh, there's like an invisible one. There's an invisible one, so you just divide by negative x. Oh, yeah. by negative x? Yes. Negative x. Okay. Divide. And you divide by negative x, sure you can. Let's see. Negative 1x divided by negative x. Negative 1x divided by negative 1x. 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 Negative 1x divided by negative 1x.
So we divide that stuff, right? So like, a lot of times, uh, the second to last no. step will look no. like that. So yeah, that's what I want you to do. <laughs> all right. Okay, somebody leaving the class is not something we need to all chat about. Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. Some number times x, like x being the, the, the variable that you want to isolate equals some stuff, right? What I'm trying to say is this is a very common setup for like the last step, right? This looks like the last step of a lot of equations. Agreed? And what happens when we get to this point? Uh, what do we do? What would get us there? Divide by whatever that number is. Right? And then whatever this, if it's 3, we divide by 3. If it's 8, we divide by 8. Whatever it is, it cancels itself out. We get x equals whatever that divided by that is. So look, it's, uh, it happened here. We divided by negative 1. It happened here. We divided by negative 3. Uh, it happened here. We divided by 8. And technically, it happened here. We divided by 5 sixths. Right? Which is the same as multiplying by 6 fifths. Yeah, what if we had like x over a number, x divided by a number? What would we do then? You multiply. Multiply by whatever that is, right? Whatever that is over one. Reciprocal. Um, sort of. Yeah, I don't want to get anybody too confused. We're gonna multiply by whatever that denominator is to cancel it out, and then we multiply by that number over here. So whatever that number is times that number, that's what x is. And the last one, which is like the first one we just did today, you might have some fraction times x equals the other side. So what would we do to cancel out that fraction? Divide the fraction on the other side. Divide uh, just on this side. Divide by this. Oh, on both sides. On both sides. Yeah. Absolutely. Divide by divide something by itself. Which, if we divide by a fraction, it's easier to do what? To, to multiply by the reciprocal. So it's the same to multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction on both sides. More like an A. We get these cancel and these cancel. We get x is equal to whatever this fraction's reciprocal is times that other side. Okay. Really common last, they're really the same thing, but they take a little bit of a different form. Um, if we're multiplying by some number, we're going to divide by that number to cancel out. If we're dividing by some number, we're going to multiply to cancel it out. If we're multiplying by some fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction to cancel it out. Whatever it takes to get 1x on one side of the equation. Now, does that mean everybody's ready to do the review? Or is there, is there another question that we can go over? Wait, do we have a test tomorrow? Or Dylan, it's the homework reviews that we always have. Okay, that's what I'm referring to. <laughs> you like things that were really like uh, I was wondering if I was going to know what you had. Yeah. If I could like no. Sent it out to you guys. And no Typically, like 99% of the time, you can ask somebody in the other class what we did. Sometimes we'll do different things, and if I make a mistake, as I did, like in this typo, uh, then I'll correct it for the class that I went to, but not to you guys, because that would just be confusing. So, uh, sorry for the mix up, but oh, for the homework that, cool. that you got confused about, just trying to, it's just one step equation. You can do the stuff in 3.2, you can certainly do the stuff in 3.1. 3.2 is building on 3.1. So let's put everything away and pass in our homework at the same time. All right, first up, 14 equals k minus 3. Doesn't matter. We get k by itself. We get rid of all numbers. And anything else that's not? Um, you would add both sides for free. I like it. 
direct to the point, and we're done. That's brilliant. Okay. Next, we have multiply by nine. What? Wait. No. No. Okay, there should be at most one person talking. You were talking first. So you're divided by nine. Negative one over nine. Oh, the next one. Well, I guess we're ready for that, right? Okay, what do we do? It would multiply each side by negative 0.5. Anytime you, you multiply a fraction, that has something in the denominator. You multiply by that thing that's in the denominator, you always cancel the denominator out. So we'll multiply this by negative 0.5. And what's negative 0.5 times negative 0.12? Positive point zero six. Would you? That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. That is why. What would be the uh, the green? Like it's point six. They did yeah. Point six. Point six? Yeah, they put point six not more than one out of Like I know it matters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, what is that 0.065? I don't know. I guess it's close. I don't know how they got that. What they got? Number two. Yeah. Should be negative. Three. Does it work there? I convinced you of, of this? Maybe I didn't. But if you're looking at this problem and saying 9 times some number is negative 108, what does that number have to be? And you just try out some numbers, and eventually you get to say 12, 9 times 12 is 108, and you write 12. Well, it's good that you understand that you're supposed to plug something in for j, but for one thing, you've forgotten about the negative. Okay. And if I see like if I see j equals twelve, that's gonna get a pretty low score. If that's all I see, like that's it. I need to see some indication that you are buying in to algebra. Okay? If you are still guessing and checking, you're just making it hard for yourself. And it will become difficult in the near future. It won't take very long, okay? I know it's tempting, and I know it's just so easy, and I know that doing it the algebra way actually takes longer. Not really. All right. But you got to think about the, the tool set that you want and, and where we're going. All right. If I need to get from here to the back of this room, or at least that distance, I'm going to walk. All right. That's faster. Is it faster than driving? Yes, because I have to get in my car. I have to close the door, I have to put the seatbelt on, I gotta start the engine, then I gotta, like, somebody's gonna have walked over there by the time I, like, buckle my seatbelt. You know what I'm saying? And then you have to the wall, and you have to pay for that. Uh, and it's just really bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but, uh, so for short distances, this is an analogy, of course, for short distances, it would be faster just to walk for, you know, 20 feet, then to get into your car, start it up, da, 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 da. So yeah, that's faster. But we, we're not just trying to walk 10 or 20 feet. We have some long, long distances, right? Some fairly complex equations, that's the analogy, in our near future, okay? We don't want to walk 20 feet, we want to drive 50 miles, okay? Ooh. We want to be able to do the, the easiest thing for the long run, okay? In the short run, it might be easier to just say, k is clearly 17, because if you subtract 3 from 17, you get 14. Yeah. When I see just answers like j is 12, when I see uh, problem number 2, j equals 12, 
I have no idea what you did. And I am going to persuade you, or try to persuade you to show your work by not giving you a very high score. For one thing, it's incorrect. J is not 12, J is negative 12. Do I know why you got that wrong? Do I know if it's just forgetfulness? I have no idea. Okay. If it's just forgetfulness, forgetfulness usually gets you a four. But not understanding something gets you to the three and the two categories. All right. So show your work until you become so good at 9j equals negative 108. And dividing by 9 in your head or with your calculator or whatever. But you're actually dividing by 9. Not just saying uh, 9 times something, 9 times this, 9 times that, 9 times that. Oh, I found it. Okay. You see that you're actually doing that work. And once you become so fast, so good, and so accurate at it, that you don't need to write it down anymore, then stop writing down divide by 9. But still divide by 9 in the calculator. Okay. So I can't, I can't uh, overstate the importance of starting when it's easy to, to form good habits. Good habits of dividing on both sides, adding on both sides, whatever, whatever on both sides rather than just guessing each other. Okay, so we're on to number four, I believe it is. Negative six equals z over four minus three. You know who next? Um, we would plus, my plus three. Plus three? Plus, yeah. Okay. And then plus three on the other side. Yes, sir. <laughs> Negative three equals z over four. Oh, and then you'd um, multiply by 4. You got it. On both sides. You got it. So you can see is negative 12. mind, look, 14.4 14, 14 times m, like that thing is usually going to be the last of what you do. Like you're going to get that m term alone, and then you'll divide by 14.4, right? Really common thing to do. So we got to get there first. So how do we get 14.4 m by itself? Plus 5.1 yeah. on both sides. going to depend on who's doing the problem because the more stuff that's in an equation, the more options there are for what I could do first. Like even with a two-step equation, I could do it a couple different ways. Uh, okay. So what would you do to solve this equation? A two-step equation, right? Uh, minus four. Minus four. What would you do after you minus four? Minus four. For both sides. Okay, Right, really simple, uh, 
familiar two steps, right? Add or subtract, multiply or divide. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But you know what else? I could do something else. It just wouldn't be something that would probably occur to people to do, right? Because it's not the best way to do it every time. I could just divide both sides by two. Okay. As long as I divide these both by two, it works. X plus two equals eight. Well, that just happens to work out well. Like what? What would not make this work out very well? Like what? What numbers would not be very helpful? Uh, the four was five. The four was five. Four was any odd number. Right? Not divisible by 2. That would not be very fun to work with. Or 16 was, instead of 16, it was some other odd number. Yeah. It would not be fun to work with. Oh my god. That was so <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> but, yes. Uh, x equals 6. If you did minus 4, you would get 12 divided by 2 is also 6. Okay. And as we put more stuff, kind of like clutter in the way of figuring out what the variable is worth, the more options we have. Well, I did it this way. Why well, I did it this way. I did it this way. I did it this way. As long as we didn't violate any laws of mathematics, uh, then you, we can do it any number of ways. So when we talk about multi-step, talking about like maybe we've got 3x plus 5x minus 7 equals, uh, let's just say, 13. be a multi-step problem. I have to take a few different steps. But what I do first is not what I have to do first. You, know what I'm saying? Like, you might do this first. And somebody else might do something else first. I might do something else first. You might do a couple things at once. As long as we follow all the laws of mathematics, we will have no problem. We'll all come up with the same answer. So what would someone do first? Uh, collect like terms. Collect like terms. Which would give us? 8x. 8x minus 7. Minus 7 <laughs> equals 13. How would that anything else? I would have added the 7 eight. first. Well, we would have added How 7 first. Two. Now we got alternate universes where one person in one universe collected like terms. Somebody else added on both sides and had 3x plus 5x equals 20. 20. Okay, what would this person do next? Like times. Well, that's not right. Add seven. Add seven. Well, that, that person added seven first. This person's adding seven second. Does that make any difference? No. no that doesn't make any difference. Eight x now equals twenty. Now this person's gonna have to collect like terms. That gives us the same thing. And then what are they both going to do now? Divide by eight. X One, equals two, ten. Two, five over two. seven to both sides, like this one, like you did here. But as you add seven to both sides, also collect like terms all at once. In other words, go straight from here, straight from here to there. You do that. Add seven to both sides and collect like terms all at the same time. Sure, sure why not? Do that. So how each person's work looks will be a little bit different from some other person. Throw a few more steps in there. Uh, 
Two times three. Well, you're ending up with zero as a coincidence. Okay? Because we do need to distribute this here, the four and the three. Yeah. Even though it's not what? Right. Yeah, they're not alike. Um, the like terms thing is about collecting them, adding them. Multiplying, I can multiply 4x by 2, that's that's 8x, right? What 4x is, okay, that's 4x. And then if I say 2 times that, I'm saying 2 of those, 2 groups of those. Remember when we learned multiplication? Like first day, 2 times 4 was 2 groups of 4, right? So 2 times 4x is 2 groups of 4x. All we're doing is saying how many x's are there? Okay, uh, here this, this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to think of this as like x. Like, I'm not crossing it out, I'm thinking it up as just like a big variable. Two times x, so I divide by two. I'm going to divide by two first. Isn't, like I'm doing the opposite of all these things. Do the opposite of multiplication, I divide. Divide two by two, they cancel each other out. Mm-hmm. 4x plus 3 equals 3. It's the same. Minus 3, 4x equals 0, x equals 0. Would that work for anything? Well, yeah, let's, let's look at this one. 3x, or 3 times x plus 4 equals 27. Let's just do it both ways. I mean, if you ever want to know, can I do that? Just try it both ways and see if it comes out the same. Then probably the same both ways. So let's do the distribution. 3x plus 12 equals 27. Subtract 12. And we get 15. Divide by 3. And x is 3. Right, let's do it this other way where we divide by 3 at the beginning. x plus 4 equals 9. x equals, uh, oh, not 5, that's 3, 5. 9 minus 4 is 5. Yeah, we go. We got 3 times something, just like we have 3 times x, we divide by 3. 3 times parentheses, divide by 3, same thing. So if it wasn't just a new property, did you do like the opposite, something like if it was like plus, or like the minus instead of plus, and you get the same answer? Do you, could you write down an example of what you're talking about? Never <laughs> mind, I'll, I'll bring it to you at lunch or something. I don't think you can do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's, here's something you definitely don't want to do. And can't do, not just don't want to do it. Can't do it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's put 50 just to make sure that it does come out in the solution. Um, here's what you can't do. Pay attention. This 3 is inside the parentheses, right? And what's happening to the parentheses? Being multiplied by 6. It is being multiplied by 6. That is very good. Being multiplied by 6. 
Children, thank you. What you cannot do, since this, this three is inside a parenthesis, has been multiplying by six. So is this really, like, is this really worth negative three? No, no, no. It's actually worth more than that. So if you see someone doing this, no, it's worth less than that. Yes, it's yeah. it's more negative than negative three. Very good. Okay. Now, can I add three? Just add three to this and add three to that. Can I add three to both sides? Yes. yes. But is adding three to this negative three going to cancel it out? No. Uh, no, because it's inside parentheses that have not been dealt with yet. At the very least, you haven't dealt with parentheses yet. Okay. So no, we don't even want to try and mess with that. You want to divide by six on both sides, just like we did these last two times? Why not try it? What wouldn't make any sense? Well, if I divide by six, it cancels out the six, right? Yeah. It's being divided by parentheses. This is what we've done these last two times. In this one, I divided by three. Like, you could distribute the three, or you could divide the three. You could distribute the two or divide out the two. Yeah, yeah. So here we are with this six. Should we divide out the six? It doesn't go into 50 evenly. So you I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to do that first. No, you don't. I would not like to do that. In that case, I would distribute, in that case, I would distribute first. I'm gonna get 12x minus 18 equals 50. Add 18 on both sides. 68. Divide by 12. Please excuse the interruption. High school teachers, please release the choir students. <laughs> oh, that was oh, oh, there was choir Thank you. One minute that's late, man. Two? I don't know. What? Go away. We don't like you. Okay. Um, so now we still do wind up with this not great fraction, but at least it was in the last step that we did that. Rather than divide by six first and have to deal with that 50 over six, the entire equation. That would be so All right, let me give you another one and see what you guys do. Did 
Yeah. Hey, some of, where are you going? Zach. What? You got somewhere to be? No, I'm just cleaning up. Just cleaning up? Yes, Jeff. Oh, How did I get 28? Oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay. <laughs> I thought I did something wrong for a second. That's definitely not. I was like, I did that, so. Oh, All right, let's talk about doing something else, approaching it a different way. Because I heard some people say, no, I didn't do that. Yeah. You do the distributed property first. Oh, you do the distributed property first. Does that make a big difference? No. no it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Pretty but much. instead, what did you do it? Uh, uh, I did like terms. Like terms of numbers? Yeah. Okay. 9x plus. Oh, 16, 16 equals 23. I'll subtract the 16s from both sides. 9x equals? Uh, 7. 7. Yeah. X yeah. equals 7 over 9. Yeah. Of course, it's all the same. True. Um, oh. Would 7, uh, or point 7 repeat? It's okay. It's okay. For an answer. I really, like I said before, I really prefer to be in fraction form. If you write, uh, point 0.7 with a line over the 7. Yeah. I'm not going to mark you wrong unless I've asked for a fraction instead of a decimal. Mm -hmm. But if I have the choice between 7 ninths and point 0.7 repeating, I would prefer 7 ninths. But okay. again, I'm not going to mark you wrong because it's, it is correct. Okay. I just feel like we have an over-dependence on writing things in decimal form and feel an anxiety when it comes to fractions. And so I encourage you to you know, get locked in a box with a fraction and don't get afraid of fractions anymore. Well, I like fractions. Right? Yeah. Fraction. Well, you, you like fractions, fraction fraction use, you have a pet fraction at home and you're perfectly comfortable with fractions. So do you have a pet fraction? But what if my pet fraction is half a dog? My pet fraction is half a dog. My pet fraction is half a dog. My pet fraction is half a dog. Oh my god, there's actually a dog with two legs. You could be a fraction. Oh, fuck. All right, so what do we do about having variables on both sides? Guys, I'm getting really tired of this. Having to compete with something ridiculous that's so easy to see and trying to convince you that you should learn this. So how do we deal with the variables on both sides? Just before, just before that, just before we say anything about that, let me use the analogy we've been using. Um, so I'm going to recreate this equation with a good old set of scales. I'm just going to wait oh. until we can all stop. Pass notes, that's fine. So let's just read them silently. Okay, we got three of these things on this side. Okay, now how are we gonna write minus seven? Ooh, yeah? A black coin. Okay, a black coin. A dark coin. So let's make some coins that are black, and they'll represent, what do they represent, Dimitri? A negative coin. A negative coin. Okay. That works. So, uh, let's see, we got minus seven, so we'll get a few more going here. And then one, one more. All right, so there's seven negative coins. Right, a black coin is like the opposite of a gold coin. All right, over here we have one, two, three, four, five, and nine positive coins. Okay, maybe it immediately occurred to you what you would do with the variables on both sides. Maybe it did it. For those of you who didn't, take a look at the scale now. We want to get a single bag alone on one side. So how can we do that and keep it balanced? First things first, I think you take away three bags from each side. All right, if I take, well, yeah. If I take three off of this side, there's no more bags over there, right? Right. Okay, but right now, how, what's the scale looking like? It's all lopsided. I need to take three off of this side too. Now it comes back and it's level. 
Yeah, exactly. I just want to know how much the black coin is worth. Or the Seven. One black coin is worth the one opposite one. of one coin. So, no, so, so okay. it's a negative. All right, all right. So if I threw a, a, a gold coin at a black coin, they would explode and, and cancel each other out. Like anti Explode. Yes. Yeah, so let's say, let's imagine it's less violent than matter and anti matter. So now, we only have bags on one side of the scale, and, and all we have to do now is get one bag. It's a lot like any other equation we see. How do we go about getting those bags by themselves? Uh, you take away seven dark coins. Am I worried about these? I'm worried about getting these bags by themselves. Okay, well then you take away all of those coins. Take away these? Yeah. So I need to take away two from here. So I also need to show that I've taken away two from here. So I also I need to like bring in two more black coins. Right? I'm gonna take two away from here. I need to do two away from here. I need to take away one, away two, four, five more. So I'll just copy these guys. Nine black coins. Right. So I took away nine from here, which means to take away nine from something that's already negative, I have to just go more negative. I need Okay, so now we have two bags here. Yes? Couldn't you have like added seven on that side too? Or would that not work? Like, well, plus seven, and then seven that seven. cancels it out, and then plus. If I back that up to, no, to right here. No, here. And I say, how about if I add seven points to this side and add seven points to this side? What will I have over here? Oh, nothing. Just nothing. And then more no. coins together okay. with these bags, yeah? Okay, no. so. Oh, so these. There we go. Because we're trying to get the bags by themselves. So now we have two bags here and a group of negative coins over here. Yeah, so you must know that it's the scale of right? Yep, of course. So that, you must know that the amount of black coins is divided by two. By right. Two. I, I've got so two groups of a bag, right? Two yeah. groups of one bag. So I'll have to split these into two equal groups. Let's see if I can do. Let's see, I need to do that and then this, I think. Yeah. That'll split them into two equal groups. Yep. So I can see it. There's there's two there. There's two groups here. So one of these groups must be the same as one of these groups. Well, that's dividing by two, isn't it? When we break things into groups, yeah. we're dividing. Let's look, see what that it's looks like. Seven on that side and eight on that. Uh, no, not. So x equals yeah, seven. Yeah, it's equal to Seven, eight. And then seven. And eight. It's hard to see, but I, I, I oh, took this group oh, around see, that I one. See. Okay, let's look what it looks like when we do it with the symbols. Right? We took three bags off of each side. That's just minus three x on both sides. Negative seven equals two x plus nine. Uh, subtract nine from eight yeah, we subtracted nine from that side, and then we had to like put more negatives on that side. We're at negative sixteen. Two x equals negative sixteen, and then we divided into this into two groups. Divide this into two groups. So mm -hmm. one of these groups is equal to negative eight. Okay. If you have variables on both sides. It's like a set of scales that has bags on both sides. We want to clear off the bags off of one side. So that only one side has any bags on it. So we'll take off bag to bag. One bag on the left, 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 until there's only bags on just one side by themselves. Let's try um, come up with if we all uh, approach that problem. Okay, uh, now, again, it, you, there will probably come a time in the future where, where you can solve some equation, you'll ask me, is this what I'm supposed to do first? Is there anything that you're supposed to do first? Only in PEMDOT. No, you can do it in different ways. You can do it in different ways. I guess only in, in PEMDOT. Only in the order of operations you're supposed to do first. So we're so that's almost always true. Yeah, yeah. That's what that video was about, right? 
Did we watch it here? Yeah. Like, it's not a strict thing that it has to be. It's just something we've agreed to. Well, OK. So what can we do first? Somebody's done something first. What do you do first? Still uh, distributed property. Distributed On property. So 2x plus 6. Got a minus 5 there. 3x plus 6. And I added the large terms on the left side. So you got 2x plus 1 equals 3x plus 6. I'm going to keep going. Yep. I uh, subtracted 2x from both sides. Careful, I saw some minus 2, just minus 2. Yes. And it, it seems for the people that I saw do that, it messed you up. Okay. 2x minus 2x is 0. You got 1 there equals x plus 6. And I subtracted 6 from both sides. 6 minus 6. Negative five. Negative five. Negative five. I don't know why it didn't show up. Uh, exactly. Uh, correct solution. Is it the correct way to do it? No. It was a correct way. No correct. The correct way. Right? Anybody else do something? What? What? Did, what are some other first steps? Correct. I mean, add five. Add five to both sides. Then distribute. Then move the x's around. Then, you know, then do that. Anybody do anything besides distributive or add five on both sides first? Surprised me. What'd you do first? Well, I, I didn't do that first, but you could, I guess, if you want to do this all the other side, you could do um, minus six. Yeah, you could do minus six on both sides, get negative 11 over there. That can happen for sure. I see. Yeah, lots of different options. No one correct way to do it. The only thing that's not correct is to do something like 2x plus 6 is 8x. Well, that's not correct. That's not a matter of what I'm supposed to do first, or second, or third. That's just not correct mathematically. OK, let's do one last doozy. <laughs> OK, let's see how we do. Four. Let's do uh, 2.3.7. So 2.5 times 3.7, that gives me 9.25x. Plus 2.5 times 5.2 gives me 13. Still minus 10.6 equals, distribute the 4.3. 4.3 times negative 4.9 is negative 21.07x. 11.61 is 2.7. OK, add these two together, 9.25x plus 2.4. Have a good day, everyone. I can't see. What? I said I can't. I was like, so you are the one because you just see him on the cover wearing the watch t-shirt. Jenna. Jenna. He's the best at doing this. I don't get it, though. Thank you, Brett, for the dollar. I don't get it, Shane. I got a deposit for you. You're living proof thing. Divide by 30. Hold on, wait. Wait, I'm just going right here. More money to live in the watch. I really like that. No. I do. I am noble. Oh.